How's it going, folks? Welcome to Idiots versus Idiots. I'm an idiot. Uh, my uh, co, uh, what would you call yourself? A co-host. Co I'm a co-host. Co-host. Co co-host. Yeah. I was gonna go with co-anchor, old school. My co-host uh -huh. here, as always, with me from somewhere in the bowels of the United States of America. Um, Danny and I are idiots. We have a business co podcast where we talk about a whole bunch of stupid uh, things that we think are relevant to business and no. entrepreneurship. I hate when you do this. What do you we want? We have a narrow, no, hold on. We have a narrow focus on this show. A narrow? We have a business news, business and marketplace news podcast. Business okay? and marketplace news podcast. That's right. Whatever Danny just said, that's what we have. Yeah. Because um, no, you can't go around saying we have a show about whatever because we don't. We don't. Well, okay. We have a focused program. Okay. We know this, what we're doing. This whole 30 second transaction is exactly what our show is, folks, because Danny's an idiot. I apparently no, it's not. am an idiot. I got a 32 on my ACT. I have 160 <laughs> IQ. Okay. I don't think so. He's full of crap. Anyway, can we get to the show today? Can, are Some you of done? those statements are mostly factual. Are you done? All right, so Danny, what are we talking about today? The first one is great story, super. Um, yeah, that, very I tasty. love, I love when companies, I love when people who are successful in industry, go. I'm going to swing for the fences, and they end up putting the bat right in their face. Right, it's one of those <laughs> where they put the bat and it, it ricochets into their face. And if it's yeah. a dude, it ricochets into his crotch. In this case, Meg Whitman, the former CEO of eBay. She's, and she's old school. She's from the era of CEOs when CEO was a job because we're in the era of entrepreneurship where it's founder CEOs, right? Right. Very rarely are we saying, I mean, Eric Schmidt being the one, the one, the, you know, because he was a CEO of Google for a while, but she's a good one. Uh, Katzenberg? Katzenberg, Katzenberg yeah. yeah. Jeffrey Katzenberg, yeah. was he a Disney guy, right? Well, not only a Disney, well, not only just, you say just a Disney guy, this is the guy that produced Lion King, Little yeah. Mermaid, Beauty right. and the Beast. He's Big, a content guy. He's a content he's a con guy. He understands content. 100%. So, so we're, we're, this is Quibi, of course, we're talking about the Quick Bites. It's a, it's a poor man, too, of the word Quick Bites. And it's Does anybody quick know Quick Bites? Like, if I said, hey, you remember that company Quick Bites? Would anybody at this point actually under not know it as Quibi? No, I don't think that anybody would understand. I don't think anybody knows what the frick Quibi is. I, well, and we're not going to know at this point either. <laughs> yeah. So, like, this was an unsuccessful endeavor on the part of, I think they raised a billion dollars. One point seven billion dollars is the ultimate and talked, number. And we, we we talked a lot. We talked a lot about different business, different ventures that have raised venture capital, um, and with crazy valuations, with no like no product behind it that makes any sense. This is different in the sense that it had a reasonable. It had, it had a a team that was seasoned in their industry, right? They had veterans. This isn't Adam Newman. This isn't Elizabeth no. Holmes. This isn't, uh, you know, I forget the other guy. Well, but this is no Trevor shell, Milton. right? They they What's wanted that? to make a company. They made a company. Yes. I, I, look, you, you have, what was Quibi's idea? Quibi's idea was we're going to follow on the back of people using their cell phones and tablets to consume information, right? In the very beginning until way too late you could not access quibi through a television it was 100 percent on mobile platforms unless you went a third party route right yeah. and the other thing too is they had actually legitimate technological advancement because they had designed it to where you could watch it if you moved your phone um vertical versus horizontal there was different and, and listen they made meaningful, not throw away. It's a feature, not a, a it's a bug, not a feature. Like they made actual legitimate features in the service that wasn't just content. That ultimately people will just, use. Other companies, Netflix and everybody else will, will go, yeah. hey, I'm going to buy that. Roku is currently in the, the uh, process Talks of to buy the content. buying the content. Because, uh, again, mobile was their big deal. Um 
unique content was their other big deal. They wanted to use unique content combined with movie stars and big names to create unique content and then give it in bite-sized information. They were going to do it like the, the chapter books, right? Here's yeah. a 10 minute, 15 segment of a hour long TV show, whatever it would be. And listen, the concept and you know, in Silicon Valley, there's because there's so much freaking money there is this con there's a i forget i think i forget what the guy what, what the investor's name was but he said something like it's solutionism right it's right. a solution searching for a problem and on some level this feels like that but i do think there is a reality of like okay um, i'm waiting 15 minutes because you know uh big man and i are supposed to meet somewhere and he's running late because he has three kids and i'm gonna watch 10 minutes of this thing right right and there's a there's an essence of that that is not solutionism, right? That is a legitimate like they're trying to actually solve a problem. The issue is, dude, I, you know, like am I paying for it? On top of that, like, well, and that's the other when thing. When they launched, they competed they, themselves directly, being a paid subscription service. They, they they put up right up against YouTube, right up against TikTok, right up against these other free platforms. Now, not the same content, right? Not up directly, but you can. I can any get it in time if I'm waiting on you for 10 minutes at the restaurant, as you just said. Oh, by the way, Dos Equis is part of the reason they say they failed, right? Because people went heavily to television, right, types of yeah, things because during listen, this time frame. I know, listen, I know people that didn't have televisions in their homes because they're like, well, I'm here a couple hours a day. I don't really need a TV. I go to a movie theater to see a movie, this, that, and the, the third. They're buying TVs. They're, they're buying homes, okay? Right. I know city dwellers who are moving to the burbs even after, you know, because a lot of my friends are still back in Minneapolis, even after that city kind of did a little bit of burning down. Well, after, you know, there's no reason, there's no rhyme or reason beyond the, the effects of Dos Equis, I think, we're, we're not even to the point where we can calculate its effect. Oh, right? absolutely on, not. On They'll the be psyche crunching of the those consumer. numbers for a decade, right? right. They'll be crunching the those psy- numbers for a decade. On the psyche of the consumer, especially when it comes to content, here's the biggest problem I think Quibi have. This is a, this is a, a low barrier market in the sense that a TikTok does not require billion dollar budgets, million, right. multi million dollar budgets. It requires teenagers in their bedroom doing, doing the act. Like, I was raised going to church as a young man. I still go when, you know, when I can, but I'm just saying, like, as a young, being raised in an evangelical church growing up, I felt like, dude, we had all the songs and the, all the songs had actions to go with them. Sure. Like, People, 90s, 90s era evangelical kids are perfectly poised to be on TikTok and killing it, but we're not. But I'm just saying. <laughs> You'd be surprised. There is a decent right. amount. You'd be surprised. <sighs> but I oh, get what I, you're saying. I get what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, it's that, that, that low barrier because when the community is creating content, it's free. And the platform just right. hosts the content, they push the content. So when you're manufacturing, when you're, when you're the content creator, and I get where they're coming from. So you don't end up like a Netflix. You don't end up like a Hulu or whatever where you're battling out. For, they paid a, Netflix paid $100 million for that last year of carrying friends. Well, and Quibi so, definitely said, look, we ca- we're having a hard time, even with the $1.7 billion in. That that was one of, look, they, they did this whole rundown in the last couple of weeks of here's why we think we failed, right? And one of them was definitely how do you compete with Netflix and, and HBO Max and all these other people with these almost unlimited budgets to create content. But HBO Max, Disney, um, uh, you know, Netflix... They had one thing that that this company was never going to have, which I think put them in a category where it was going to be almost impossible from the start, and that's content from the get-go. HBO Max and Netflix and and, um, uh, Disney, they they have... They've been putting out movies and shows for a long time. Their library is massive, right? So that's the thing. They had a deep catalog that... There is a, uh, even if it's a small audience, mm-hmm. an audience, 
that, for instance, if you love mafia movies or TV shows, like I still love watching this. Oh yeah, absolutely. Right, and I have a, I have a, you know, a chameleon accent. So let's say I'm, I'm talking with Big Man for 15 minutes, I start talking like he does, you know. <laughs> I start sounding yeah, like do. Joel Osteen. Yeah, you do. But I start watching The Sopranos, and I go, "Oh, freaking," you know. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like you have a deep catalog of content. Whereas Quibi is starting from scratch. Yes. And the thing is, a TikTok, even though TikTok didn't really start from scratch, it acquired musically, but and that's really its its um, entree into the American market. They have millions of users, and the users generate the content, and then the users consume right. the content. So their pipeline is different. So these guys are coming into it with all the disadvantages of a traditional platform. Mm-hmm while all the disadvantages of not having a content catalog. So they don't have users generating content. They don't have whatever. I'm wondering, you know, is there, do you think if Roku buys them, they're just acquiring the content? Do you think they buy the app as well for all the technology it offers? Because at the end of the day, Roku is a technology company and its first product was the set top box. Then they have their own TVs. Right. Well, they make a speaker. I, I think Quibi does. I, I think Quibi, like mo, like a lot of companies that um, that break down or fail or whatever, it, it would be in their best interest. And look, all the people that involved in this, Katzenberg or whatever, they'll all end up making money off of this, even though the company fails. And that's exactly oh, yeah. how they'll do it. Is they'll they're going to turn around and Roku's going to buy their content or somebody will because again, we live in a world. We, you and I talked about this streaming world, good content, and that was one of the things that they said Quibi failed was is they partnered with some of these movie stars or whatever and then didn't put out great content. The writing wasn't okay. there. That the So you have marginal content, nothing that ever caught on and became right a great show or anything like that. Roku wants that content because it's unique. It's not something they have. And then I think whether it's Roku or someone else will buy that technology piece of it and you piece it out. Why not sell that part of it to yeah. Netflix or somebody else? Yeah. Sell so this your is content like, to Roku. Yeah, this is like a nineties like KKR style where they're just gonna split this thing up, move everything uh across different, you know, and, and split it up and, and sell the parts. You'd of it. make the your the parts are worth more money than the collective, yep. right? Quibi it's did like, not make any money. Sell the content to Roku. Roku's not a huge company like an Amazon Prime or, you know what I mean, Netflix. Right. Sell your content to them because they're willing to give it to you just because it's easy. And then take that technology. Sell it to Amazon. Sell it to Netflix. Sell it to yeah. somebody. And I do think an Amazon might be the right player for them. You know? um, or it could be even HBO because HBO is, is backed by AT&T and I do think they're making a strong play into the concept. Um, and this is actually, this is like AT&T had tried a similar concept with Go90, which was a, which was mm -hmm. a, like a similar, like 10 minute. So this isn't the first time this concept failed. Well, YouTube um, tried it with RedTube a little bit, right? And YouTube A. Nope. No, no, no. The, the YouTube Red. RedTube is something different. Right? I'm sorry. YouTube Red. I which apologize. is now YouTube Premium. Yes, but they eventually that first idea was the short get Casey Neistat and some of these other people to make yeah. longer content that they could create and piece out to people or whatever, right. and it really didn't catch on. I think YouTube's still trying to find that groove of getting they're, people to pay for a TV channel, right? Yeah, and there, I mean, so I have YouTube Premium. I love it. I've had it for years. I get you. I get YouTube Music with it as well. Um, I, I love it simply because I'm not going back to watching ads on YouTube. So, but like, that's you what know, you're paying for. You, you, yeah. I, I subscribe to the higher price version of Hulu for the same reason. I don't want to sit in and watch commercials or whatever. That's different than hey, I want your your unique content. Um, yeah, because all of all of YouTube Premium's unique content got split up and moved to other platforms. Right. Their hit was Cobra Kai. And I think, honestly, I think YouTube Premium was the only person who was going to pay for Cobra Kai. I well, don't which think is owned by Netflix now, right? And and Netflix you know acquired I mean? Cobra Kai. They had another show. I forget what it was called. And it was controversial. Um, and I watched the first season. It was really good. I think it was, I forget what it was. 
Was there some 17 year old kid just going on a rampage doing violent stuff? Like burns down his house. It was good. It was a fun. It was a fun show. Well, and Dude right. Perfect got bought out by some cable channel, right? Dude Perfect had to show yeah, on YouTube. Yeah, Rob Yeah, and then Super but, so back to Quibi though. I, I think so. When you start going down the why this company failed, I think another one of them is, and you and I have talked about this before, and it's one of my favorite things about business in the last several years. And this is another company that's a great example of how not to do it. Is you, especially in the beginning of creation, business, content, whatever, have to be nimble. You have to be ready to take feedback or whatever. And according to several things that I read, this Katzenberg guy came in with this huge ego and said, no, hey, I've created Lion King. I've created all these things. I'm the man. I'm saying this is going to work. And by the time it wasn't working, and and he's like, no, it's going to work. It's going to work. And by the time they started the changes, it was just too late. It was just and too that's, late. And that's where I see, or that's where in this story, I feel the solution in search of a problem. Because he, I know the market, right? right? The reality is you don't got a daggum clue. And not to be ageist, but the entire board of this company is a bunch of old people. They're not to be to ageist, but not to, anytime you say not to be fill in blank here, but you're about yeah. to be that you're ageist. You're saying that old people in this case had no connection to the consumer, which was really what? 18 to 35 year olds. Probably. I, I don't know. I think, I think what, from what I garnered, it was more like, 25 to 40 year olds right that elder millennial to gen x generation right where they're commuting they're getting on a train they're getting on a bus right and yeah. the reality maybe they maybe what they didn't think about and this is what katzenberg why he knew too much right and there is no there is no greater problem in your in your executive office if your ceo knows everything well, right? uh, not just the and CEO, but the people controlling what happens. Exactly. If people, right. The people guiding the direction of your business, of a startup especially, if they know too much, I think you're doomed. Because you have to have somebody who's going to sit back and go, and that's why everybody loves Elon Musk. He goes where the market is, mm -hmm. right? But on some level, he's creating the market because the dude probably does a ton of peyote. But, <laughs> Among other but I, things. Among other things, but I'm just saying, like, his brain is not stuck in the office, you know? Right. And for, to Meg Whitman's credit, she took eBay from nothing to something. Then it got just homicided by Amazon, right? And it, she was, mm -hmm. so in some sense, she seems like a short-sighted player in this, you know. You're always industry. brilliant until you're not, right? But again, I think it's nimble. When you get to that kind of greatness, there, there's this illusion that you will be great forever. The fact is, is that most millionaires, most billionaires, most, most companies, and and people need to understand this. Most CEOs got where they are off of one thing, and everything else yeah. they've milked since then. That doesn't 100%. mean that everything that they have done. You say Elon Musk, okay. Uh, by this way, but this this past week has now overtaken Jeff Bezos as the richest man in the world. By the way, again. My On point, paper. though, is is Elon yeah. Musk is definitely one of those guys where you look at a track record, there's a whole lot of mistakes yeah, along the he way. Yeah, a lot of dumb choices. Right. I mean, a great example of what you're talking about, and then we'll move on to the next story, is mm -hmm. Mark Cuban. Yeah. Mark Cuban took, and he fell ass backwards into that billion dollars that he got, right? Into Yahoo. Absolutely. He sold. He was sold broadcast.com to Yahoo, and then... Yahoo's nowhere. His broadcast.com is nowhere. No one cares about his dumb service. But he took that billion dollars and he built it. Oh, absolutely. And I, here's the thing. You're, you know, this is the parting line here. This isn't a shot against Cuban or any of these other people. Mm -mm. You're only no. as good as your last hit. Hey, absolutely. And you're that's only as good as your last at bat. That's a baseball term. I've never watched a baseball game in my life. But you're in the, in the music industry, they always say, listen, man, you're only as good as your last hit, right? Right. Credit to them. If you get a hit, if you go chart, good. You're better than 99.99% of the population that never had a hit. Right, absolutely. You know, there's people like the, the COO of 
of Elizabeth Holmes's company, Theranos. He, the people de- kind of denigrated him, like, oh, he had a hit in the 90s as a tech guy. Yeah, how many hits did you have ever? You can ride that forever because, you, because said, most people don't dude, have one. And, and here's the lesson. Flip this thing on its head. You only need to figure out one dumb thing to sell for a couple hundred million dollars, and then you'll figure out where to put the rest of the money, and you'll goof off with the rest of it. And mm-hmm. if that's what you want to do, like, you don't have to go be a serial entrepreneur and be successful no. serially. No. Right? But if you can knock two out of ten out of the park, 20%, you're killing the game. You're killing you're it. You're killing the game. You're killing the game. And that actually, speaking of knocking it out of the park and timing, right, brings us to our next story, right? I think, especially with everything that's going on in the world of social media, I believe there's a future. And there, there's an article that we have that goes along with this that Twitter and Snapchat end up merging. And I have a thesis on this, but I want to get your thoughts on it. Well, I, I look, I, I don't use Snapchat that much. I have it on my phone. My wife uses it a lot um, with her family and stuff like that. Uh, I do use Twitter. Um, I, I, I read more Twitter than I use Twitter. I, I Look, I, I don't think so, and here's why. Now, my, in my I'm experience— I'm a prolific tweeter. My experience with this is that I think Twitter has existed in its current form for so long because it's useful. If you remember, and you, you, well, you're you're about a decade younger than I am. In the in the early days of the internet and chat rooms and stuff like that, the the existence of chat rooms in their form lasted 15 years. And why? And they kept trying to alter them. They kept trying to do different things. And it all basically came down to a basic chat room because it was simple and people liked it. Twitter, I think, is very much the same way. It's super simple and people like using it. It's a real-time app. I put it out there. It goes out to everybody that follows me. It has the ability for people to find me. All I have to do is text it on this phone, right, in 160 characters, and it goes out. I don't have to record anything. I don't have to do anything else. It's super simple. It's like 200-some characters Well, yeah, they've upped it now. But my point is is it's super simple, and every time they've tried to add something to it, what does 99.9% of Twitter still do? They type they in their it. tweet and they get yeah. it out and they go on about their business. Do you? Je- I understand growth and you got to continue to grow or you die. There's no third direction, but I don't think that Twitter wants to take on something like a Snapchat and try to integrate it in such a way this that disrupts their original thought process because you can kill a company. There's a lot of companies out there that integrate something that all of a sudden their users don't like anymore, and then it dies. And and here's why I – here's my thesis on it. There is an article on The Verge. It's old now. The story has kept – the story keeps falling off of our our story list, um, but I'm happy we're finally getting to it. Twitter, Twitter created a new feature called Fleets. Right. Um, not only have I not used this feature, I hate this feature. <laughs> I have been banned. Uh, I have been banned from Twitter for doing a slight, but they referred to it as a racism, but they didn't understand. I'm an Indian guy. I made fun of an Indian comedian. Just because you're Indian does not mean you can be racist, Danny. You need to understand that. Yes, it can. No, it doesn't. In this country. No. In this country. No. No. Okay. But what I'm saying is I made fun of a comedian of the first of all, it's a comedian, so you're a lot like they should have the fort, the intestinal fortitude to go along with. I, I agree with that for 99.9% of the time. And yeah. here's all I basically, I just said, I bet you only speak English. And I got basically effectively saying, I'm more Indian than you because you don't speak anything <laughs> other than English. <laughs> and I got the boot. But I got 14 different accounts, all for different purposes. My, While my different I disagree businesses. with why you got booted because I don't find that racist, I'm yeah. still happy that you got booted. I I take – anytime you get booted from pretty much anything, anything, there's some personal joy in it for me. Just FYI. And sometimes that's – I wonder if this relationship can last for that reason. But um, <laughs> uh, no, but like – so I had 20,000 followers. I had 16,000 tweets. It wasn't uh, – but I have, I have across all social medias, 
have separate profiles for my different businesses, mm-hmm. separate profiles if I want to say something political. And I have right. one personal one where I follow my friends, but mostly my friends' wives to see pictures of their babies. Because they're but cute, I and I Look, just want to see their cute and racial babies. Back I don't to really the Twitter thing. I, I don't think anybody, I don't know of anybody that actually caught on to the Fleets thing that, that uses it regularly. That, that, you know, that No, I see people using it that I follow pretty regularly, and that's, that's why I do think that there is a potential. Here's why. These are two companies that have grossly underperformed whose user base is not going the correct direction. Sure. Their IPOs were... Uh, uh, hey, people still made money, brother. They did. I'm not saying they didn't, but I'm just saying, like, the their IPOs didn't perform. You know, the Snapchat was... They all had a heat-up period. And this is my opinion anyway, but Twitter went from... Twitter was about to not matter, 2016. Then something happened. I'm not going to say what. And then for four years, something continued to happen. I'm not going to say what. Right, 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 right. right. And then it's not going to happen for them anymore. And that, I think, was... It was like you took best wrestler off of WWE, and then you're like, well, I mean, so, like, you're going to have to find a... There's going to be a refractory period. Where we have to kind of, I don't want to, maybe you use the word rebuild is incorrect, but the spirit of what I'm trying to say is a lot of users got turned off by that, Mm -hmm. whatever. Again, I'm not saying what happened, but I think there's enough. It's going to be enough people where it's, whether it's the people that left or the people who are entirely animated by that one user's content, Mm -hmm. right? Because that one user had so many replies. And people whose entire audience was built on replying to that person, right? Even though that person is no longer on the platform, right? Not right. Really, like there's so that uh, the the ripple effect of that one thing could be large enough to where they are going to have to figure out a new lane for where they're going to matter. Well, but I think that's constant. I, I look, and I've always been a fan. It of It is this. constant, but I'm saying I don't think it was ever. They I don't think their Twitter is anticipating. The volume of what it's going to be. Absolutely. And even if they are, I don't know what they could do about it, right? I mean, you and I aren't on the inside of Twitter and the meetings that they have and and a lot of big companies. Well, and maybe you are. But look. I'm getting leaked information about the inside of Twitter (laughs) all the time. (laughs) Here's the point. I'm the WikiLeaks of tech. Wouldn't it be more beneficial to to work with a company than necessarily acquire or merge companies? Wouldn't it be – like Facebook, even though Facebook bought Instagram, Facebook right. still has not integrated Instagram. What they did is they integrated the ability That's for them to true. talk to each other. That's not true. That's not true. You can it, when they when you say integrated, I don't know what you mean, but I what think I'm they, saying is is remove Instagram. Like taking away Instagram, it is now Facebook, right? Oh so, that, yeah, you're right. That's it's what compa- that's what companies ultimately do sometimes. Yeah, and in my so opinion, they haven't absorbed it altogether. And, correct. and the reason we bring this up is Twitter created fleets, and now Snapchat they've made an agreement where your snaps and your fleets are synced up. So I think that scale of integration, when you're integrated that much with a competitor, mm-hmm. if you can call them that. I think when you do that, there's there's at least we're you know we're flirting, right? Well, but that's my point. That's why why do they we're have not, to go so far as to the disco, envelop? We're flirting, right? They that, can they can why not create the technology and it's already out there in a lot of different ways. But give the people that are in Snapchat the ability to click a button, a bluebird that yeah. then shares their information to Twitter and vice versa, right? Twitter having a button that says this information and now in some way, right, gets communicated to their platform and, right. and do it that way. And both of them benefit now from maybe snum- there is maybe there are people out there on Snapchat that, that would enjoy their, right, stuff being on Twitter and vice versa versus this whole eating each other up and trying to integrate. Yeah, no, and so when I say merge, what I meant by merge was not was more of a Facebook acquiring Instagram. And I think Instagram's initial hope was to get acquired by Twitter. Because if you look at what they were doing, um, their initial integration was was into Twitter's API. 
your username mm-hmm. came over from Twitter, your um, your fo- your picture, your you know, it came over from Twitter. I always that thought that too. I always thought that too. I I thought that 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 was that was the most logical step. Twitter acquire Instagram. Now you're acquiring that video type of, you yeah. know what I mean? It was a picture. It was just pictures back then. Well, but I'm but, sorry, but y- you see what I mean. Yeah. Like that was the I, next I step. I see exactly what you mean, right? And that was at the time where they still had Vine, so they had all of this going on where they could have easily acquired, acquired it. I thought it was, and then as the story turns out, Zuckerberg came in with a billy, and Twitter came in at eight seventy seven or something like that. I think that yeah. was the offer. They took the Billy. And I would take the Billy too. <laughs> you can't. Well, because at that point, at that point, they were also going to lose control, right? Of it, right? They were selling the company. They weren't yeah. just, hey, let's work together, or whatever. But they if, were. But selling if I'm the Kevin company. Systrom and you tell me I can have a, a billion dollar exit, even though he's not taking the billion home with him. I don't care if he took I, he he took home a hundred million. That's for dang sure. Right. That there's a After difference a year? between there's a difference between I'm going to sell you my product entirely and walk away, or we're mm-hmm. going to work together. I may choose a different path for a little less money, if I work you know to work with a particular person. But if I'm just getting rid of it, man, highest bidder is the one that gets it. Yeah, and I I don't I don't I here's and that's why I think because I think here's what's happening. And this is why I think they are going to go down a path where they become one company. Whether or not they merge the products is a little different. Sure. And if they become one company, here's why. I think they're two small. Com- they are two separate, smaller competitors. And Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp is this massive behemoth. Mm-hmm. And the only way to continue to matter in this post, that guy that I'm not saying his name, not because I hate him, just because I don't want to talk about it. I'm so sick of talking about it. In that post era, they have a path to, because they have Periscope and all these other apps, Mm -hmm. there's a path to actually building a portfolio of social apps where they're not connected or whatever, but they offer different levels of service. And I think that that is, and what happens ultimately is they go, hey, we have one platform, not one platform, but we have, you know, holdings company. So you know, Jack Inc. Sure. No, after Jack well, Dorsey. Jack Dorsey Inc. has has X number of users across fifteen different apps. Right. Combine they go to audiences. advertisers and they monetize. Yeah, combine audiences, right? Because that's right. what it is, right? The bigger the audience, the more money advertisers will pay you. If Twitter and Snapchat combine their audiences, they would both benefit from a higher cost of, of profits from advertising. And uh, so with you, I, I get that it makes sense. I just don't know that that A, it would happen, either one of them. Not all time. Look, a lot of CEOs and a lot of stuff like that don't always follow logic, right? Hence our first story today, right, Quibi? Right. Right, and stuff like that. So there's a lot of moving parts of that. Sometimes it doesn't always, they don't always follow the things that make sense. And, and speak- listen, my, fi- Go my final thought here is like, you know, another reason I think this makes sense for them, their audiences are two separate groups of people. Absolutely, and that and that so, part makes it even more advantageous for the, both of them, right? Because, because they are the different overlap audiences. between the two groups of like power users on these apps, influencers on these apps, is two separate groups of people. So that you have a genuine growth in audience, you know, or genuine growth in user base, mm-hmm. where it's not like okay, we have sixty percent of our users in common. I think it's enough where they go mm-hmm. okay. We bring in we we create this powerful multi app multi pronged business, where ultimately what's the goal? Eyeballs, right? right. Completely Gary different v, demographics, eyeballs. right? Which is one of the reasons I think Facebook ultimately buys TikTok. Completely different. I Can don't you, think so. Well, no, I'm just saying if under that idea, right? Okay. Facebook obviously Generation Z, right, and mm-hmm. stuff like that. But but imagine Facebook acquiring. You're acquiring you TikTok. the TikTok next TikTok is gener- Gen Z. Well, that's what I'm saying. Facebook yeah, but, not great with Gen Z is what I'm oh, saying. I didn't hear that part. And then you sometimes... acquiring TikTok, you're essentially acquiring another generation that you don't currently have access to or minimal access to. Well, your uh, your theory is stupid and idiotic, and that's why our show is called <laughs> Idiots and Idiots. Now, I want to talk about a story that we talked about. We didn't really talk about it, 
but we alluded to it in our About Us episode. If you haven't listened to that, mm-hmm. go check it out. It's episode three. I talked about Peloton. Right. Oopsie doopsie. Oopsie doopsie. This is idiots versus idiots. I refer to the machines as being like seventy seven thousand dollars. They're like eighteen hundred bucks. Eighteen hundred bucks, two grand. Eighteen hundred bucks. Nineteen. I'm sorry. Nineteen hundred. Eighteen ninety nine. Yeah, but they go up to like three grand if you get the treadmill. Right. I might have. I might have. Oops. But what's interesting is, in a New Year's kind of fashion, Peloton is acquiring. The commercial em- uh, fitness equipment manufacturer, Precor. Right. Precor? Mm-hmm. Precor? Precor. For $420 million. And I don't know how you feel about this. I-, I think it's cool. But the thing that makes, here's my reaction. That's all? Well, okay, but you're talking That's about, it? you're talking about manufacturing. You're not talking about a company right. that, that, you're talking about a manufacturing company. You're not talking right. about a company like, well, when you say you and I are used to talking about stories where someone the just tech. acquired somebody for four hundred and twenty billion dollars, or yeah. you know what I mean, or whatever, like with Slack a B, or whatever, and was. now we're talking about just under half a, a billion, right? You know what I mean? But here, there's something more real to me about here's a physical thing you can touch, and some chubby guy like me on January third <laughs> runs on the machine for two minutes before he has a small aneurysm. Uh huh. And here's this chat room from AOL that you can put some code into. One is half a billion. The other one's half a trillion. Well, I mean, okay. L- well, but let's l- let's back up a little bit and look at the company Peloton. You're talking about a company that 80% of its revenue is still created by selling this product, selling the actual bike, selling the treadmill, selling the, a physical item. Only 20% of its income, and I only know this because it's a publicly traded company, 20% of its income comes from its monthly subscribers. That's what they ultimately want to build off of because that's where you get to crazy evaluations, right? Your yes. audience. So I, here's my question. Why do you think they acquire pre then? Well, because th- because that brings right now that's their money maker, and by acquiring it, their cost of that product, I'm still okay. going to sell it nineteen hundred dollars. My profit off that's probably going to double or triple. And okay. when that because right here's what they're really look most publicly traded companies or the ones that want to go publicly traded are less worried about Pel- Peloton Peloton or Pel- Peloton whatever. Peloton is not currently – they are looking the long haul. They are looking stock right. price, right? You're talking about a company, again, that's benefited from Dos Equis, a year of Dos Equis. This company was irrelevant a year ago, just over a year ago. They weren't ago. irrelevant. Their stock price was $20 a share. It was probably never going to be much bigger than that. They were losing franchising. These these people that were buying these bikes for these things – uh, these uh, uh, little workout places that were popping up that basically have gone out of business during the last year because people couldn't go on a daily basis right. and stuff like that. Their, their outlook was not bright, right? Right. Then they pick up because the at-home, what's happened to the at-home gym stuff in the last year? Yeah. It's got, you, can't go to the, you can't go to Academy right now and get dumb weights because they're all right. on back order. They've all been bought. So they've yeah. benefited. So they go in the last 12 months, they go from a market high of $20, $23 a, a, a share. They're right. currently at uh, $162 a share. Okay. Well, well, and then that gives you what does that give you the money to do? The money to go out and acquire what our bread and butter currently is, which is a manufacturer to make our right. stuff. We bring our cost way down, which then increases the profits, then does what to stock prices. Uh, right? Okay. That's what their that's what their eye is on because they and then they need to at some point turn to their subscriber base. How do they up their subscribers, right? And listen, I am I am a member and have been a member of Lifetime Fitness for a bajillion years. Right. The first Lifetime Fitness was opened in my hometown. Um, like not not a nearby suburb, um, the suburb I was spent the most of my oh, life wow. in. Um, and I, I go to the original one almost every day. Um, when I'm in town, so uh, listen, um. They were pushing when they paused because the uh, various states had 
disclosed or whatever. Sure. They're like, hey, join up Lifetimes online, blah, blah, blah. And it's included with your membership. And if we'll, because they're not charging you because you can't go in the club. Right. We'll keep charging you 10 bucks or 20 bucks and you can use the online at home. So it is an expanding market where you get all of the benefits of a guided workout, all the benefits of a class with none of the, and listen, I don't like classes because I don't want to be that close to other people while they're exercising. I'm there with you. Okay. I'm not embarrassed about my size, but boy, jiggles, you know, I'm not embarrassed about that. I just, I'm a, a guy that requires space. Right. Yeah. I require space. I can't have nobody next to me while I'm trying no, to exercise. No, no. But uh, look, and that's where Peloton and that kind of stuff, they, they bringing that into your house. That's their idea. But to yeah, do that, they've got to continue to grow their subscription, which isn't bad. I mean, you're currently talking about, I think it was $39 a month, right? Or something like that. Right. But you've got to get that to the masses. You can only sell so many machines, right? And let me At, tell you something. I got a question for you now. Ambush. Yeah. Ambushing you. Nordic track. An yeah. established player in the work workout at home industry mm-hmm. is now expanding into everything that they're and this is I love when companies do this, right? New, shiny, innovative company. Ooh, we're so we're tech focused and all this dumb buzzwordy crap. Mm-hmm. And then the established player goes, dude, we can do everything you're doing because there's nothing proprietary about it. And they just come in and crush them like bugs. I like watching. They just stop at them like cockroaches. <laughs> then when, they're, when they go from their $100 billion value to they're worth $10 million, they just come in and buy them up and go, ha-ha. Well, look, I, I, again, being nimble, right? You and yeah. I continue to talk about this. If, if Nordic Track or Peloton or whatever else, they buy that manufacturing, then uh, guess what? I can not only make a bicycle, I can make a treadmill. I can make yeah. a climber. I can make a, you know what I mean, a weight set. I can make a bench. I can make whatever I want because I now own the manufacturing piece. And all I've got to do is pay engineers to make something that they've already made a billion times before and put my name on it. So now let me ask you this question, and you know we'll move on to the best story we have today. <laughs> How long before you think? Because if you if you put it to me like this, you know, okay, well I bought a Sony TV because it comes with Sony network. Right. If I want Netflix, I got to buy the Netflix TV. That's weird. Like, come on. You, you know, these apps are all universal. How long before Nordic Track, all these other companies, they just, they just, there's one universal app, or maybe it's a separate company that says, you can go buy whatever bike you want. Our app is on that. And then you turn it on and you're in the class or what have you. Mm-hmm. You think that's how this plays out in the long run, where you're just buying a, a treadmill, dumb weights, whatever you're buying, and you, you subscribe to whatever app you want that has the best workouts or the hottest trainer. I, I think you're. I think the market is big enough. You're going to have both. Um, okay. I used to work out in a gym. The gym itself went under. The te- and the reason it went under is because the technology of the gym was the benefit. The niche of the gym was it had an LCD screen next to basically a total weight gym, right? A, a, a all in one right system, Machine. and it had a, an LCD screen that said, "Hey, here's what you're doing." It kept track of your weight. So you didn't have to, oh, well, I'm going to arms now. I need to switch it. It kept track of everything unique to you and told you what to do for 30 minutes, right? Okay. And gave you completely interactive. I remember this gym that you were going to. It was a dumb gym in a strip mall. Well, but it, it, it doesn't matter. The point is, is that was their niche and they were making a crap ton of money. And why it's relevant to this is because what happened, why the gym itself went under, not was because of the members, but because the guy, the owner of the company that owned the software that they were using right basically turned around and said you're you're too small and sold it to somebody much bigger right so they pulled the technology so i think there's room for both you're always going to have a lifetime fitness right that comes out with something yeah. like that in the future you're going to have a peloton that has their product and then because as those gain popularity and guess what people want to be told what to do there's a reason classes are so popular right and all these cycling yeah. classes are so popular people want to be told what to do they don't want to be sitting there going all right well next up is right whatever the third, they want to yeah. be told I, I hear you so there are third-party apps i actually was listening to um 
a Pat McAfee show the other day, and they, he had a, a previous NFL football guy that was on peddling his new app that essentially is, let me tell you, based on your body type, what you should be doing, right? So I, I think you're going to see both. Until somebody, until somebody really catches, until there's a niche that really catches that becomes that big name, right, in it, right. I think it's wide open. Okay. No, I think some of these apps, and I think I, I could see a future where Peloton goes, uh, Peloton is the name of our app, Precore is the name of our machine, mm -hmm. but whatever that is. But, uh, yeah, I think that's interesting, and uh, I think you uh, you had the you had a, our last story for us. <laughs> all right, all right. I laugh, folks, because, you know, on the rare occasion that Danny actually allows me to, uh, you know, pick Very a story. Very rare. It, yeah, he, he doesn't. He is kind of a story Nazi. We've talked about that before. Uh, Danny likes to uh, control everything. So on the rare <laughs> occasion. I like to put out a quality product for our audience. I yada, care about yada, yeah, the quality of what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. Okay, <clears throat> Forgive me for caring. Yeah, whatever. So anyway, the, the story, he allowed me to pick a story for the, this week's episode. And the story I picked, it was one of my favorite. And, you know, usually the scam stories are Danny's thing. Usually, he you know, he has his favorite scam or whatever i came across this story it, it's from a couple of months ago but it just became irrelevant again uh in in 2020 the year that is 2020 a man out of seattle created a little website and a little company that before it was shut down made five hundred thousand that's a half, half the million dollars selling 5g repellent lotion 5g repellent lotion that i also found out today you can still buy from a company on ebay for 36.99 it's actually 36 even i'm looking at it right okay. now. okay 36 dollars. i have a quick question for you yes sir why are you <laughs> number one why are you calling this a scam it is a scam it was shut down okay. it right. was shut down the company was shut down for for fraud it, it the company getting shut down does not equate it being a scam <laughs> okay, big, big network. Verizon doesn't want you to have the truth. I knew Danny would love this story. And I... number two, why do you want people's internals to get scrambled by 5G? Why do you want that for people? Uh, yes, it's spreading all the diseases all across the world. 5G right. and everything. Like, look, I, I love a good conspiracy theory. I find them entertaining. I don't believe any of them, but I find them entertaining. And a good conspiracy story... I believe story... some of them, man. Listen, I it was as anti-aliens or real as the next guy. <laughs> and I still am. But I'm just saying, at this point... There's it does not gonna take too much to convince me, right? It sounds good, right? Like it sounds it sounds good. But five G, I mean come on. But then look, and here's where I partially agree with you. And and I agree with you that that scam is a harsh word in this case. There are true to life scams. We we did an sure. interview with a con artist and, and you know what I mean yeah. and all that kind of stuff. There are true to life scams. In this one, is it really a scam? Because the guy was selling him lotion, he wasn't selling him anything that was dangerous to them or anything like that he was selling them lotion and is it is is it his fault that the people buying it are idiots is it his fault that the people bought that that he went and marketed guess what facebook has group after group after group of these 5g conspiracy theory idiots right so not only did he did he provide a product but he he facebook completely made it fish in a barrel fish in a barrel let me tell you something. Some of these people you're callously referring to as idiots <laughs> are my friends, okay? I have no doubt. Yeah, and listen, I here's why I, here's where you and I have a difference of opinion. I'm an anarcho capitalist um kind of a Austrian school of economics, value is subjective. If somebody buys this and it brings them value, it brings them comfort. I, I, no, it's no. your money. It's no. their money. They're, no, hold on. They are they are free. Maybe not wise enough to make choices that are good for them. But listen, I think people are going to make choices that I disagree with. They're going to buy things I don't like. Um, and if this guy has some mitigating thing in there that he says, "Hey, this does do something, some sort of exfoliant, uh, emollient, or something," 
that does facilitate some sort of barrier, right? Whether or not that the five G, like that's irrelevant. No. I think the the wider the wider context of it defending against five G or five G even being a problem is irrelevant, right? No, but it is because he's marketing. This is why there's a difference. Here, I'll give you an example, right? There's a difference between what I call this a scam and being I am a true to life capitalist. Right, I am a true to life capitalist, and here's why. There is a guy, and 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 uh, we'll try and I'll try to get him on here. I know him through I, I know him through a friend of a friend, but the guy is a multimillionaire, and he will tell you flat out, 100. percent The guy has made millions selling nothing but Vaseline, petroleum jelly, right, to golfers because he calls it putting grease. Right, it's Vaseline. He makes no frame about it. It is 100%. You go down to the store, Walmart, Walgreens, and buy petroleum jelly, and you can use it in exactly the same way. There's no difference in the thing. He just puts it in a different jar with his logo and markets directly to golfers in golf pro shops or whatever and charges like $50 a bottle instead of three or whatever it is. I have zero problems with that because he's not making a claim that is inaccurate in any way. Well, let me let me push back on that by saying this much. If we are agreeing here that there is no meaningful danger to 5G, and how, how then can one say he's making a claim that is false? Because there is no danger to 5G, so if you put the lotion on or don't put the lotion on, you're not going to have a problem. Because the lotion doesn't protect you from 5g that's the scam part of it i have if he called it 5g lotion i got no problem with that 5g is just a name but he calls it 5g repellent lotion yeah and listen <laughs> 5g repellent i kind of dig it man <laughs> I mean... I, I, well i knew you would you're kind of a scammy guy and, I, and i'm not a scammy guy i'm not a scammy guy i would never do this appreciate a good scam you appreciate i appreciate I should, a good I, you appreciate a good scam which is why i knew you would like this story and again did this guy do anything i think is illegal i i, I don't think so right no again assuming that he did should this guy go to jail absolutely not there are a lot of, of you know not. but he, I do appreciate, which is why we talk about we're talking about it on this show. The guy saw what he saw as a market, yeah. Saw some fish in a barrel, and he got out. You know what I mean? His- Listen, and let me make this comparison. I know these kinds of people, and they always have their home remedies, and they go buy this thing and that thing, and they make a home remedy for whatever. God bless them. If you, if you, and here's the thing, I don't know what I don't know. They could be entirely correct. Sure. I'll give you an example. Someone in my family, they brought their baby home from the hospital, had some sort of rash, and uh, the baby had a rash, and the hospital's pulling, putting all, and this is true to life, all sorts of prescriptions, and they're like, there's side effects, blah, blah, blah. And my mom tells them, just put some coconut oil on the affected area, and it'll be gone in two days. And they go, oh, okay, <laughs> coconut oil. Three days later, they go, uh, we put coconut oil on it, and it works. It has no, and there's no side effects. And so I don't always, and the problem is I have more of those stories than I do where, so I'm just saying, like, do I think this is fake? Yes. <laughs> do I think it's hilarious? Yes. <laughs> is my biggest regret about this particular story that I didn't come up with it? Yep. Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, As it we is. mentioned in our Quibi story, you only need one dumb thing to pop off for you to build on that success, even if it's across various industries. Yes, sir. Now, I don't know if this guy's going to get charged with something because I don't know what the heck you charge him with. Well, I don't if think you is... charge him. I think they, I think they just took his ability away to sell that. Yeah, and I think it was way. the company yeah. where he was selling it that took their like they they pulled him from their sales platform. Yeah, but my question is, I know that you can go buy right now for fifty bucks. You plug it into your house, you plug it into somewhere in your wall, and it blocks 5G signal. It doesn't. <laughs> hey, we sitting here talking about how this guy got it taken away. Obviously, you found it on eBay. And Amazon, right now, you can put a, Danny can put a link. You can literally go for, I think, $39. And like you said, it's a sticker, Danny. 
it's a it it says 5G repellent sticker yeah. that you put on your cell phone because apparently and it's going to affect your phone as 5G's going to negatively you know, affect your phone too. Okay, listen. I think there's a there's a so if we have some Italians in the audience, you know they they have this they have this superstition about the eye. If somebody gives you the evil eye, uh, it's well, actually a, this Hispanic is a, as well. This is, the ojo, right? The evil yeah, eye, yeah, the yeah. ojo. Yeah. This is the tradition in my in my in my family's culture as well. They have to in order to repellent. They have to have a horn. They have different different things. This is nothing new, okay? That, so if you are, that's and, true. And, and for the sake of the conversation, I'll say, let's just put this in that category and say you have a superstition, and somebody not allowed to, you know, sell you something to ward off your superstitious belief. I think you get into a gray area. I think there are some people out there that would argue that by feeding into those superstitions, and 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 I do agree with you. By the way, if if you, I don't care what your if you crystals, if you believe rubbing yeah. a crystal on you makes you healthier, and it does by the placebo effect, good on you. Don't care if if rubbing a sleeping with a crystal underneath your pillow makes you happier, good on you. Okay, I have no problem with that. However, that person that is then there's a difference between a person selling you that crystal because you're actively looking for it and someone convincing you that this right. crystal is going to make you happier and whatever. I think there's a gray area line between a con yeah, and and someone just believing in a superstition. So I had a loved one who was really sick and she was I shouldn't say easy, but. I could understand how it'd be easy for her in the situation that she was in to feel like to to bet on anything, to try whatever, right? Sure. And 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 the scumbags came out of the woodwork to try and sell her whatever the whatever nonsense they had. And I so the, on, from that perspective, I think that's scummy behavior, right? Right. But if you're a person who goes crystals work, I, okay. Right. Like, if you, like, I have no compunction about the person who goes, I'm a palm reader. We both know you're scamming, right? We both know you're scheming. <laughs> hey, you and, just stuck up for superstition. You can't separate palm reading from superstition. It's all one big category there, Bubba. So, he, and I agree. And listen, I'm a person who is deeply religious. And on some level, intellectually, I go, eh? <laughs> some, of what I, some of what I believe that is ob that I believe to be objectively true. Right. It's a little kooky. So yeah. I don't want to be hypocritical in saying, well, I get to believe in my kooky thing, which generates billions of tax dollars, uh, untaxed profits for various people, right? Because I'm, I am a simp sucker consumer of like if John Chris puts out, you know, if he ever gets to release his mm -hmm. comedy special, he is a he's my generation of Christian guy and he's funny. Right. So <clears throat> I'll consume his deal. So what I'm saying is I don't want to be hypocritical, but at the same time, if you have a loved one, maybe it's your responsibility to be like, hey man, you want to buy crystals? Great. But if you're paying for the extra crystal you're paying an extra thousand dollars to have a shaman bless your crystal. Maybe that's where. <laughs> well, obviously there's a line in there, but I do agree with you again. Like I said, let's just say for a scenario, I had Grandma Mary, right? And Grandma yeah. Mary was afraid of 5G. She's read somewhere that 5G is going to kill her or give her a disease right. or cancer or whatever. If if this lotion that cost me thirty six dollars made Grandma yeah. Mary feel better that she wasn't going to die today because the evil 5G was going to invade her home with ghosts or whatever it is, yeah. <laughs> then is it is it worth $36 and her peace of mind? Sure. I'm completely down with that. But I yeah. think in business, you have to constantly figure out where that line between taking advantage, right, of someone versus again people's own ability to well i'm a person and i'm allowed if i want to spend my thousand dollars on a shaman to bless my right crystals i should have every right to do that where is that line right where so, is that line let me put it to you this way uh 
when I went to college, I got a degree, and part of I've a double major. Part of my degree is counsel. Um, and uh, my mother's in the business as well. She's a doctor in the. In the let, me, let me put it to you this way: You go to someone, you say you have all of this childhood trauma. It's going to take five years of therapy, and that costs money. Right. Or we're going to give you this 5G lotion, and you're going to feel good. <laughs> it's 36 bucks. And if we, if we calculate it that way, like we have to put someone to throw so much therapy to overcome their issues that are leading them to this conclusion, right? Where if we just give them a comforting lie for a brief period, it will, absor- you know, it will help absorb some of that trauma Give them the 5G, anti-5G repellent sticker, bro. <laughs> well, but that's your opinion, and you're allowed to have it, and you are an idiot. Um, I'm an idiot, yeah. and I'm allowed to have a completely different opinion that it's a little scammy, right? You're, little you're scam- allowed to. I just don't know if I like the fact that you do, you know? <laughs> That's that's where I'm coming from. That's all right, man. That's all right. We I we don't always got to be right there on the same page. You can be on the little scummy side. I can no. be on the right side. I can be on the correct side of history, and you can be wrong. <laughs> I think that's our show today, right, Danny? I think so, yeah, I agree. We're ending it on that we agree that we're both idiots and we're both wrong. That's what you're saying. I'm saying something completely different, and you never really understand what I'm talking about, but that's that's it. (laughs) You suck, by the way. You're an idiot. But Right back at you, Slick. All right, folks. We'll talk to you next time around. Bye.